Hi! In this couple of videos, we will demonstrate how to reverse engineer from scan data and convert them into a CAD model. So, in fact, we will convert this into this. For the purpose of this, we will use Mesh to Surface plugin to create an accurate CAD model. The first thing we start with is the scan data as an STL mesh imported in Rhino. We select the mesh and call Mesh to Surface Shapes. Mesh to Surface is a plugin for Rhino and it has own 3D window, which is very similar to what is in Rhino, where the user can navigate the model. It contains buttons to place the object into a predefined views like front view, back view, isometric view, etc. On the top left part of the window, we can see a list of primitives which Mesh to Surface can create. There is another selection bar where the user can control the way he selects triangles from the mesh. The list on the left will show all the already created primitives. There is a panel where we can control different properties of primitives we create. Knowing all these basics, we can move on and try to do the reverse engineering of the part. If we investigate the part, it's quite important to know how it is placed in space. We can visualize the coordinate system and analyze the object. In this particular example, this model is created of a revolved surfaces and the wings. It's important to know that the axis of rotation of the revolved surface is very well aligned. If we place in bottom view, you will see that it's properly aligned in space, so we don't need to do this for our particular example. Now we continue and we'll try start creating our surfaces. We cannot create this with a single one revolve surface, so that's why we'll create two revolve surfaces and we'll trim them later in Rhino. The way we define a primitive is by selecting an area which represents this surface. The, surface con the selection controls are free hand selection, you can select using by drawing a line and using the magic wand. Free hand selection is applied by the user when he just simply holds the left mouse button and paints on the screen. If the user wants to unselect an area, he needs to hold the Alt key on the keyboard and repeat the same precision. Also, there is an option which is the user can control whether to select front or back facing triangles. The Magic Wand is a powerful Two, which selects triangles based on its on the curvature. The sensitivity of the curvature can be controlled either by the slider or holding the control mouse, holding the control key and using the wheel of the mouse button. Now we will continue and select the area of our first revolved surface. holding the Alt key to unselect what is undesired and we add some more extra selection here. We are almost ready to continue, so we select the shape which in our case is revolved surface. On the left part of our navigation window we can see a lot of properties of our revolved surface. It represents the direction of the axis and where the base point of this rotational axis is. In our current case, Mesh to Surface tried to fit a revolved surface, but it's not correct because we don't have the, all the points which from the whole revolved surface. So we need to adjust this manual in order to get the correct results. First of all, we select the direction of the rotation, which is the z-axis, but the direction in this case is only defines the orientation, but not the base point where the axis passes through. We will solve this by selecting the base point. Now our revolve surface is correctly defined. 
What Mesh to Surface does creates a, a lot of sections through the selected points to define the point which will be our reference for the sketch. We can control the number of sections by changing them into the property window. The surfaces like extruded and revolved have a sketch. This is the profile which defines the surface. Mesh to surface has a dedicated interface for the sketch editing and this is available for both revolved and extruded surfaces. Mesh to surface tries to fit a single line, while, which in our case it's not applicable and it doesn't represent correctly the surface, so we can we need to delete this and create a more complex sketch. We simply select this on the screen, press the del delete key on the keyboard and the line is getting deleted. <coughs> the sketch mode supports has uh, several primitives like line, tangent arc, arc and freeform curve. These are accessible either from the control panel or by right clicking with the mouse and selecting it from the context menu. In order to create quick curves, the user can hold the mouse button and paint and mark the area which represents a curve. Mesh to surface tries to fit a line or arc depending on what type of point have been selected. This is sometimes very useful for quick creation of the sketch. Now, if we look at the, the rest, the uh, part of the sketch, we see that this is uh, not an arc, so we need to modify and create it by using the freeform curve. Freeform curve is defined just simply by clicking on the screen to define the anchor points. I will create the other part also. I intentionally create this as a freeform curve because the trimming in Rhino should not fail later. But this can be implemented as a line and then an arc and another line here. When we have roughly created the sketch, we can use the powerful Tolerance Display option. The Tolerance Display option this shows how the, our created curves approximate our original scan data. There, there is an Option button which can, where the user can customize the options of this Tolerance Display. The Tolerance represents how close we are with the scan data and this is our green zone. Also, the user can show the result either as a pass-fail, which means that all the points within this tolerance will be colored as green and the other ones will be colored in red, or he can use the gradient display which shows the scale in a different way. Me personally, I really prefer if I use the pass fail option because this is more useful while we use the sketch. So now that Mesh to Surface does this on the fly, so you can have control at any time about your quality and how close you are to the point. There is a snapping option which is on by default, which helps the user to create very accurate model by while moving the points are snapping vertically or horizontally or at, at the, the same point, so the user can switch it on and off. In some cases, if a quick switching off is needed, the user simply holds the OUT button and makes the movement. In this way, you can adjust very accurately how the points lie in space. In the case of freeform curve, the user has the ability to manipulate the curves in two ways. One option is by moving the anchor points or the other option is by using the control points of the spline. This is useful if we want to preserve the tangency. In this case with the with the snapping option enabled the user gets very accurate 
tangent control. Once we're ready, we can go back to the shape and just see how the, the original shapes look like. If we see the results here, we see that the revolved surface represents the original data quite well, but for the trimming purposes, we need to extend this a bit more. So I'll do this in sketch. So we have a much longer line here, which is good for the trimming process later. Once we created this surface, we are ready to move to the next one. I will create another revolved surface which represents the body of the impeller. We'll create a new shape, then we'll go to the selection tool, we'll use the magic wand, select the rest of the part. We don't need the part from the wing, so I'll play with the, the sensitivity control. Also, we will need this cylindrical part here, so I'll use the manual selection to add this to the, the other selection as well. I zoom in, I think I'm ready, I don't need to have everything selected, so I then I create again a revolved surface. If you see, the orientation is quite bad and it's not properly defined, so again we'll control this by adjusting the direction and the base point to be through the origin. We'll go to the sketch where we get all the points from the scan data. Quickly by selecting on the screen I can define the lines, also by moving them and with the snapping option enabled it quickly aligns them and sets them as a vertical lines. I will introduce here the tangent arc. The tangent arc is very helpful when you want to make a fillet uh, uh, of the sketch. This works by simply picking two of the endpoints and the software automatically builds the tangent arc. Just notice because the tolerance display is on, I immediately see the results of my actions so I can adjust them and put it very accurately within the tolerance. If we look at the rest of the profile, it looks like an arc, but if we create an arc here, it will not fit the, the surface very well. So that's why here is the, the user who decides how to approach this. So he needs to think about the design intent, whether this needs to be a perfect arc or it needs to approximate the surface better. So it's a matter of personal choice or the customer request. I will do this with a curve here. Again, the tolerance display very well shows how we approximate the surface. And this gives a full control of the process. In some cases, if we need to insert a point, we just click where we need to insert the point, move the mouse, and the new point is inserted. I will use the control points to adjust the tangency. And we will play with the other. Once we're happy with the result, we can switch back to the surface and see how it looks like. I intentionally made this longer for the trimming purposes. So now we are ready with this revolved surface as well. Now let's look at the revolved surface. There is a handle to control the seam line. The seam line in the revolved surface is quite an important for the Boolean operations. So it's good to place it in the right place. So the mathematical operations in Rhino later works well, because we will need to make a pattern of the wing later, I will just adjust the seam to be in a position 
so the wing doesn't overlap this line and Rhino can make a good operation. This was the first part of our tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it and we'll continue into the next one. Thank you for watching.